What's a different mindset you guys can have now moving forward after today? What's the more practical thing that you guys can do? And we have prayed, like, God, let your will be done. But some days we would say that and then... <laughs> we, we say it with a wink. God, let your will be done. Exactly. But exactly. let your will be on our time. Yeah. yeah but, we exactly. need this, but we need this to be positive. Yeah. This test result to be positive next week. You know, so... We really give God a catch-22. We admit that. Good morning. Back in the doctor's office again. Um, the insemination was not a success on Monday. Um, I think um, I've been mad. I've been mad. I've been angry at God this time. Um, I couldn't pray. I, I hadn't prayed in like a week. I just I was upset. Um, Ricky and I went to Allen's Pond after we found out and sat by the water and just kind of, we talked, we yelled at God, we comfort each other. Um, it's crazy. I think those things keep bringing us closer together, this whole thing. Not that we weren't close anyway, but this just, this whole process just brings us closer together. But anyway, so I'm back in the doctor's again for a sonogram this morning. And um, then afterwards, I'll talk to the nurse and they'll say what the plan is, which is probably gonna be the same plan it's been. Um, so this will be the start of going into my third insemination. Um, this morning I was saying to Ricky, we usually are like super excited and making real uh, happy posts like, hey, we got our next round. Yeah, that's not where I'm at today. <clears throat> Just going through the motions today on top of everything else that was going on. Um, on Monday when we were waiting to find out. I just wasn't feeling well. My blood pressure and everything was three digits. And then I had called my primary. Um, and the next morning she wanted to see me because I was still like 149 over 105, but my pulse was like 123. So she wanted me to come in and I was ex expressing this dizziness I was having. Well, come find out it's vertigo. So on top of <laughs> dealing with the insemination not being a success, my cycle starting, and I'm cramping really bad, and then now I have vertigo on top of that. So it's been a week. Um, I can't wait to get off today. I just wanna disconnect and just, I really just wanna like lay on my husband's chest. That's where I feel everything's okay. Um, yeah, I don't really have many words today. You guys are really catching the high lows of this process. So we'll see what happens after this appointment, what they wanna do going forward. Um, of course, if you know me, I'm a researcher. Uh, I like to look stuff up. So um, if I had really looked stuff up the first time, I would have seen that we really didn't have a good chance the first two times. I would have saw that really. It's not until you get to get third and sixth time that we actually have a chance of becoming pregnant. So I guess with all that, and I have more tempered expectations. And here comes my wife now, she is finished. So let's see what the updates are. Going through this process is pretty, you know, tough emotionally. Um, and Chris and I, you know, we, we tried our best to comfort each other, um, but we realized that we, we needed somebody else we could talk to. So we decided to, um, contact Pastor Darrell and Minister Veronica. Uh, they are the, the marriage counselors or premarital counselors at, at our church. And, um, you know, so they were our premarital counselors and they will check up on their couples from time to time. So 
this time we said, hey, we need, we just need to chat with y'all just about what's happening. And, um, you know, just want to see what words of wisdom they could give us. I'll let you know. And then, so when she called, she was just like, unfortunately, it didn't work. I couldn't even talk after that. I mean, I was literally heartbroken. I could barely get enough out to tell Ricky that it wasn't a go. And then I think she called back, hung up on her. <laughs> she called back and Ricky had answered. And I mean, I felt like I grieved something that I didn't have that first time. Um, so, and I mean, we had prayed. I'm, like he said, I'm in the prayer academy with Pastor Arlene. I think the day we were, day before maybe, I had Ricky like praying with the oil on my stomach. I mean, we just, that's, I felt like that's all we did. We were so consumed in prayer that whole time and then I, we were crushed so the second time I honestly really didn't pray I just wanted to do everything different I didn't want to tell anybody I didn't want to focus on the prayer and they was like well you just got to praise them in advance so I tried to just we tried that the praising them in advance it didn't work so this time I'm kind of like all right well I'm not gonna pray as much on making it happen we know your will and then we get disappointed again we could pray to until it rains and the rooftops fall off. But if that's not what God's desire is right now, we kind of have to switch it around in our mind and just say, Lord, let my will align with your will. Mm -hmm. You know, Help us to see that what you want to grant us by your desires, you know. Just to be encouraged. Don't let this biological click uh, clock or any of the previous things be a factor in how you are emotionally about it and how you know how you're gonna cope with it. It's just a matter of time, and then you just have to ask God. It, you know, just he, he will tell you, is this for us? You know, you know, align our desires up. You know, that's the one thing that we want as a couple. But Father, you know, just show us you know, the direction that you're taking our life. Because where you are and where he's leading you and what is going to be the ultimate goal that your union is going to bring to God's kingdom, we just don't know. So we just have to kind of flip it around a little bit and just stay encouraged. And, you know, people block people out. You know, sometimes you have to block them out from calling and, you know, just block out the negativity or even if it isn't negative but if you're not ready to talk about something right now it's okay to tell people you know what we don't want to discuss this any further right now we're mm -hmm. just you know we're trusting god and we're going to handle this among the two of us what's a different mindset you guys can have now moving forward after today and we have prayed like god let your will be done but some days we would say that and then <laughs> we, we say it with a wink god let your will be done exactly but exactly. let your will be on our time yeah yes. but we need this exactly. but we need this to be positive this yeah. test result be positive next week you know so we really give god a catch 22 we admit that <laughs> right, right. so now moving forward what can you know, how do you fix that prayer moving forward pray god's will let it go we either going to trust them or we going to trust them. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now that you've had these conversations, now that these questions have come up, mm -hmm. now that you have a different mindset of what God could be saying, mm -hmm. just think about that before you do your next one. Mm -hmm. And then the thing about it too is, you know, in our disappointment, whichever way it goes, there's always healing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we thank God that, you know, people invented in vitro and things like that. But as you're seeing, it's just, those things are there and they're not always, a, anything we do is not always 100%. Right. So when it's not 100%, now where is your faith, you know? Yeah. Just keep trusting God, you know, regardless of whatever direction that he has. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a like I said, when we first started, nobody knows that plan for you guys but God. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, as I said in my session tonight, sorry, as I said in our session tonight, um, the biggest thing has been remembering that there can really only be one prayer that you really mean, I guess. 
we of course want a child. We do pray for a child, but at the same time, the prayer shifts so much from God. We pray that this test result gives us positive news to you will be done. We trust you. We trust your timing. Your timing has always been perfect. Your timing, yes, has sometimes been unexpected, but it's been right on time. So we are praying that your will be done. And even if your will leads to something different than our expectations, then I pray that you give us the the strength and the comfort to abide by whatever you decide. I really like how they kind of broke stuff down today. Right? I never really looked at myself as a modern day mm-hmm. woman of the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah. When they said that, I was like, oh, the pressure. I'm like, <laughs> you just compared me to a modern day Hannah. Like, I hope our story will be a blessing to someone else. And like you said, people ain't reading the Old Testament, but they'll read this uh-huh. or listen to this in the new age. Um, so I pray that when it's all said and done and this, you all actually see this, that it will be a blessing to someone it really helped put things back into perspective today because mm-hmm. we were, we've just been in a headspace. And that's, that's one thing I like about them. They don't judge. No. You know, we expressed our anger that we had. Okay, let's be real. We're, we're human. So, mm-hmm. yes, he's the pastor. I'm the pastor's wife. But we still hurt. We still get mad. We still don't necessarily understand everything that God is doing. Right. And, and we're young. I mean... So <clears throat> today was really good to help put things back into perspective of um, that we are human <laughs> and it's okay for us to feel what we have been feeling. Uh-huh. I, I think we've gone through every emotion possible in the past month. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, literally the past month because as soon as a cycle ends, it's like they hit you with the you're not pregnant and then, like, to make matters worse, I feel like the next day your cycle starts within the next two days after that. And then the day three of your cycle, you're right back in the office starting the next cycle. Mm-hmm. So you trying to process what just happened, but all in the same. You trying to process, like, here we go. And just take about us praying for our own, praying for our own selfishness, like praying. Yeah. Pray, praying yeah. for our wants. And right, not and not his will. will. Yeah, we yeah. pray for our wants and not his will. I'm gonna put that in my sermon. Yeah, that was like a yeah. gut punch. Like, yeah. That I mean, I, I told him I, I'm, I'm taking that. We pray for our wants and not his will. Mm-hmm. See, the thing with trust is, trust is earned. You know, trust. Yeah, I can. You can give your trust to somebody, but generally, you got to give it based on some kind of knowledge of a person. You know, you don't just always get blind trust. And if you do, I question that. But you know, with, with God. You, we develop trust through trial. Yeah. You know, that would be a good one. Yeah, we develop trust through trial. You know, you got to go through some trials with this person to find out they're, you know, they're dependable. They will come through for you. And, you know, it's no different than God. You know, you develop trust through trial. And even Chris and I, I mean, I feel like even in the midst of this trial, we have developed a deeper love because, like, you can love, of course. You can love a person for who they are, but sometimes your love deepens when you go do something together. I felt like we both have individual things we've had to encounter and the other person was there to support, but this is the first thing I felt like we've collectively gone through at the same time. Same emotion, same. You're right. Mm-hmm. You know, you know with your anxiety is like, I feel like I'm an outsider looking in, but I'm trying to get into your head, trying to understand and as much as I can. And then, you know, I know for whenever I deal with, with passing, you know, you're, you're looking as much as you can, but like this one, okay, it's got punched both of us at the same exact time. So what do we do? I mean, I feel like it punches you worse. I feel like it, it punches 
you get in the gut, but it punches you in the gut and the back and the head. You know, so. But yeah. All this to say, we trust in God. We're going to keep on moving. But we're going to keep on trusting God through this. Yeah. Worse, worse. Hey, we're back at it again. I'm doing my trigger shot today. To power you. Yep, yeah, so we're going to do it. Please. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so in the middle of me up here getting my shot, Ricky just got back in town. He came in and um, I planned a little evening for him, which was timing things are just getting all thrown off because he was supposed to come home yesterday and he did not. But anyway, his, uh, Kevin is a blessing. He uh, picked him up from the airport dropped him off here so us because um, his car is in the shop so i sent him straight in the room he came in and i sent him straight to the bedroom and i had um his robe and stuff out for him in the shower running and told him to get in the shower i had a little mixed drink for him when he came out told him chill till i told him to come down my uh my girl elisa is here um she is downstairs in my studio waiting for him and he came out and i walked him down and then we opened the door and she was there waiting for him. So he is now down there getting a nice massage to help him relax after driving for the past four or five hours back from Roanoke, Virginia. So then I also have dinner. I feel like cooking, I ain't gonna lie. So I had um, DQ, Nietzsche, cook the meal for me. So yeah, and then I wasn't gonna lie, I was supposed to do this pedicure. I had ordered this the foot stuff and I was gonna do this nice pedicure for him later on this evening and Amazon nicely blew my whole entire life and messaged me today and was like uh it was supposed to arrive but it's not going to arrive now until tomorrow maybe the next day so I'm really mad about that so now like what are we supposed to do the rest of the evening so uh the other thing I have planned is a bourbon tasting so I have all these like shots of different types of bourbons and we're gonna do a whole little tasting. And I'm gonna print out this little paper that I have and we're gonna do like smell and taste and something. So that'll get us through. So we'll see. But that's it for now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, we're gonna do this. Anyway, this is Monday, August the 10th. Uh, today was round three of insemination. So what's really interesting maybe got appointed with the time is that during this month of August, um, Minister Janine from First Christian and myself, we're doing a series on waiting. God began to reveal to me that we are indeed in a prescribed season of waiting. If you never heard her preach, you should listen to everything she's put out on the church app or whatever, man, you're missing. It. But she said an acronym that I really love that really stuck out to me is we are called to be weight watchers an acronym w-a-i-t meaning with anticipation i trust when we are saying that we are weight watchers in this season what god is saying is that this is not a season where you are still but this is a season where you are moving with anticipation intentionally trusting him to do just what he said he's going to do meaning that as i wait in this season i'm declaring that with anticipation I trust that the manifestation of the word that has been released over in and around my life will come to pass. With anticipation, I trust that God will see me through this dilemma. With anticipation, I trust that if God said it, then that settles it. Therefore, I determine that I will watch and intentionally trust God because I am a weight watcher. That pretty much sums up where I am right now. Um, I believe where Chris is also is that we anticipate that God is going to answer. We don't have it yet, but I'm going to still trust God until he answers. And even if God doesn't answer the way that I'm hoping, I'm still going to trust him. Now I'm preaching this week and what's been <laughs> my scripture for a while has been for Samuel talking about Hannah. And it was for a while I used to look at Chris as Hannah, you know, she's not happy that we haven't conceived in almost two years of marriage. And I would think I'm out kind of trying to talk to her saying, look, you know, I love you more than any son, you know, be happy. 
But the thing that I was, wasn't understanding was that I'm saying that to her, I'm trying to make her feel better. Cause as men, that's what we do. We try to make our wives feel better, but I wasn't really understanding her pain. And what we have done at times is we try to remedy the problem without understanding the emotion behind the problem. We're, we're trying to come with a logical conclusion of why, you know, why are you sad? You know, look at the, the upside, but we're not taking the time to really commune and communicate with and to sit in the ashes of sadness with our women to understand what is it at the core of them that is hurt. We cannot fix the emotional. All you can do is just try to understand and sit in silence. Instead of giving her a voice to listen to, just give her a shoulder to cry on. So it was in there that I realized, okay, I was, I've was been approaching this wrong, but then at the same time I'm realizing it's not just Chris that's Hannah, it's me that's Hannah as well. Because I desperately want a child as well. I'm definitely praying to God and begging to God with <laughs> no words coming out sometimes of, when are you going to bless me? Please don't forget us. So it's a house full of Hannahs. Right now I'm outside with Tristan. And if there's anything this little boy has taught me, when he was four years old, he wanted to go to Disney World, but he was unable to because his mom didn't have the finances for it. So he kept on saving his money. He kept on saying, I'm gonna save, he's gonna save, he's gonna save coins. People were giving him money. He kept on saving up, saving up. He just believed that one day he was gonna get there. You're 20, you got 10, and you got all these singles. Guess how much money you got, buddy? You got $110. Oh, Guess where we're going? We're going to Disney World. Today? We're going to Disney World tomorrow. But you got enough money to go to Disney World, buddy. You're gonna see Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> you made you it to Florida. It. You made it, it to Florida. Florida. Yeah. We're going to Disney. Say, I'm going to Disney. I'm going to Disney. <laughs> the thing about him is that all along he believed that he was going to get there. And he got there. Yay. Every night, Tris prays for us to have twins or pray for our brother or sister. If Tris keeps that faith, that, that's honestly what helps keep me going. But just remembering a child's faith. He prays and he doesn't doubt that God's going to give it to him. That God's going to bless us. When we pray to God, God has four answers. Yes. He'll bless you the way that you want. No. It may not be in God's will for you to have whatever you want. God... Maybe he's trying to protect you for something. I don't know. But God will sometimes say no. Everything is not a yes. God will say wait. But then here's the fourth answer. I have something better. We might be waiting for God to move on our situation. And we're thinking that God is going to move in a certain way. But just suppose that delay is because God is working on something better. My mother and my sister are very shady. I love them but the Johnson family is very shady. Every year for Christmas, it, when, when, before I had the job I, I had, when, when I was working you know, at my one place, you know, still living in my mom's house, every year for Christmas, it would always be like, okay, Rick, what do you want? We exchange names and all that stuff. It, it would be Christmas time. And they will ask me <laughs> what I want. But I'll ask, I'll be like, can you give me a pair of jeans? Can you give me a shirt? A pair of shoes, whatever. And when Christmas time will come and I'm opening up the box, I would see not just a pair of shoes, I would see like boots. I would see stuff that I didn't even know was like a name brand. I'm not going to act like, you know, it, you know, that hot dog. I would see stuff that I'm like, I didn't ask for this. What is all this? Y'all gave me more than I look for. You know, what, what is all this? I don't normally wear this. They said, you don't know what you like. How are you going to tell me I don't know what I, I know what I like? You asked me, how are you going to tell me I don't know what I like? And I actually asked my sister this. I, asked, I said, okay, explain to me. What do you and mom mean when you say I don't know what I like? Make that make sense to me. And Erica said this. She said, you don't know what you like because your vision is limited. 
you don't know what else is out there because financially, you don't know what else you can look for. You're stuck to what's around you. You're stuck to wearing chucks all the time because that's all you can afford. But mom and I together can afford more than you. So because we can put our resources together, we can give you more than what you expect and better than what you expect because you're, we're not limited by what you're limited to. God can give you more than what you expect because God is not limited to your resources. God is not limited to your financial situation. God is not limited to what you're waiting for. God has something better because God is better. He sees what you cannot see. He has money for what you cannot afford. He is able to go where you would never shop on your own. Release your will to God. Because truth be told, we know what we want, but we really don't know what we need. We don't have God's vision. So if you want to get out of a heavy weight, I challenge you. Release your will to God. My mother always says that before you can preach a message, God has to preach it to you first. And the story of Hannah was definitely one that God preached to Chris and I during this session. Uh, when I was giving this sermon, God had already preached it to me. After I finished the message, which you, which you did not see on camera, was that I pretty much was in the pews just bawling. I mean, I just had pretty much emptied my whole self on on in the pulpit. Like, when you're going through something and you're preaching what you're going through, it takes an emotional toll on you. And I was just... And I, and I wasn't crying that, you know, crying tears of, like, shouting, tears of, like, happiness, or tears like, God is over. It was more so realizing we are in this situation. We are two Hannahs in one house, and we are crying to God. But yet we have to release our wills to God. And we know what we want. We know what we're hoping for, but we're gripping onto that vision of our of our child that we have but it's like we got to let that vision go and let God just let God just do what God's going to do and it's hard <laughs> you can preach it but it's 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 hard it's 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 the hardest thing to let your will to let your wants go and just to put it all in God's hands. But it's the most necessary thing though. It's 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 the only way to get out of these seasons. You have to just let your will go and just trust God completely. You gonna get on coming? Going in for it. Huh? So I'm going in for attempt number three, blood test number three. All right. Give him some good blood. <laughs>